I wanted to show off something I've been working on. This is inspired by something Seamus put up. This is just Blender. And uh, this is a scene I made just to kind of play around with procedural textures and the the EV render. This is the, the technique that Ian showed off, Ian Hubert showed off in his video. I'll, I'll have a link to that too in show notes um, with the reflection and stuff. And then all of these um, textures are things I came up with myself. So one of the neat things about this is that it's procedural uh, linked to the world. So all the all the seams always match up, always matches up with the, the rest of the world. So that's one neat feature. It's also got a bump map on it, but the bump map's not showing up very well. I don't know what's going on with that. I'll have to look into that at some point. Uh, another neat thing is that these, oh, there we go. That's a pretty good view. You can see these tiles are all, why do I, why do I have a circle around my cursor? I don't know why I have a circle around my cursor. All right, well, anyway, uh, you can see that these tiles all have reflection, but the reflections are offset per tile, but the tiles are, are kind of uniform, but they're also a little bit wiggly. And uh, that was something that took a while to figure out how to get, get right, but got that working too. Uh, and the, the seams in between have a little bit of, of texturing to it. Oops. And there's a gradient on it right above the water line so that it looks like it's got wet on it or something. And uh, it's also procedural on the orientation. So this is the, the same object where you can, uh, so you can see that the, the, um, the tile is always on top. So even though I rotate this thing, it's always gonna have a tile on top and the lines are always vertical and all that stuff and that's uh well i'll show i'll show how that's done soon so anyway i also showed up or made this little um, pathway to kind of show this off how you can have a very few points so this is just you know like maybe eight points or something um and this is controlling this this pathway and the pathway is always going to be horizontal because it's extruding it vertically and then thickening it sideways so anyway just some fun procedural modeling stuff. Just playing around with the uh, the procedural text is really nice to not have to worry about UV mapping and resizing objects and stuff because you can you know, take one of these and duplicate it, size it up, and the textures all stay the right size and all you know, line up with everything else. I could remove the lineup, but I, I kind of like how this vertical, these vertical lines all, all line up across the, the different objects. And the tiles are all the right size and everything. So let's take a look at how this is actually done. Um, the, the water texture is pretty straightforward. This is just something that Ian showed off. You, you do a 4D texture with an animated W property on a Musgrave and it goes into the bump and the bump goes in the normals and that's how you get the water uh, and then the only other I mean, I, well I guess we could show off this um, I've got screen space reflections turned on so where is that screen space reflections here and so that's where you get this uh, reflection of the object if you don't then it just reflects the background but if you don't have the background it wouldn't look so great and as you can see this is all floating inside a copy of itself you can see in the background there's you know a copy of this thing and that is from equa rectangular panoramic and so i rendered out in cycles this uh this image and uh that gives me the background so that i get the, the reflections that look proper uh, so for the procedural texture itself, it's kind of a mess, but um, hopefully I'll be able to explain how this works. So first off, it's based on a brick texture uh, with a frequency of one instead of two, so that it doesn't it doesn't have offsets. So if you set this, well, I'm gonna mess everything up. So you can see the 
now the walls have offset, so kind of like bricks, but we don't we don't want that. We don't want to line up. So frequency one, and then I've got um, a set, let's see, a set here and here that are going off of, or no, these two, yeah. These two are going off of this empty, and these two are going off of this empty. So basically I'm using an object as an empty. Uh, I could be using like a, a world space transform, vector transform or something, but it's easier for me to think about with these empties. And that looks like, uh, where are those? These are these empties here. So if I take this empty and move it around, uh, yeah, you can see it's shifting the, the position of that whole coordinate system. So if you can, you could animate these, of course, and here's the, here's the tiles on the, on the surface, the blue tiles, the blue and purple tiles. That's the one that's based on. And then this is the other, uh, I think this is the other, yeah, this is the other dimension, it's this guy. And so they're all lined up vertically so that the, the vertical lines match, uh, but you could move that around and stuff. And then this last one is the, uh, the waterline texture. So it's got all those, you can see I'm moving the, um, the little, oh, what? Grease lines or whatever. And so it does that, and then it also does the height of this thing. Uh, so the coordinate system is, you know, like I said, it's all based on those, those empties. So that's these one, two, let's just get a better view of this. Uh, one, two textures, there's a texture here, that's for the, uh, the blue tiles and a bunch of the other stuff. And then this is the last texture for the, uh, the water, the watermark. So uh, watermark's pretty straightforward. It's got object, it's using the object coordinates, using the empty as coordinates. It's got a linear gradient and a Musgrave texture. Uh, that object is, that empty is scaled really small on the, you can see the scale is really small on the X and, or on the, the Y and Z, and then scale normal on the X, normally on the X, but it's rotated. So that means that in effect it's, well, let's see if we can find it. Yeah, it's really tall and skinny. And that's why all of these streaks are really tall and skinny because that's it's transforming that whole, uh, that whole coordinate system. So that's that. Um, and then I've got those two, I've got a divide on the Musgrave just because it, it tends to be too intense. And then I'm mixing those together just a little bit so that the, the, the Musgrave texture doesn't overwhelm it. And that is the color and then that gets blended in here, multiply. I'm using a lot of multiplies to mix stuff together. Um, back to the brick texture, so this is one brick texture and this is the other brick texture, but in order to be able to adjust them, I've set them all to have inputs on these little inputs over here. So these are the colors and the scales and the mortar size and all that stuff. And so that means that you can adjust these really easily. So you can make these really wide or make them really narrow or make them really short. Ooh, that's too short. There we go. You could do something like that if you wanted. Uh, yeah, so it's all procedural. It's easy to adjust. And then side scale, what is that? Oh, that's just scaling the whole thing up and down. Um, yeah, oh, and then the grout width, so you can make these really thick or take them away entirely, whatever. And then the texture colors, so we could make this, you know, have a kind of a green color if you want, or make it two colors, kind of a green and a yellow, I don't know, whatever. Might want to 
increase the brightness on those so they're not so dingy. Anyway, so that's that's kind of fun. That's all procedural. And then same thing with the tiles. The tiles I only have one of because it's only projecting straight down, so I don't need project from the left and then project from the right. Oh yeah, so so these are these are these two brick textures for the the concrete on the sides. They get multiplied together here so that you get one and the other. So if I just take one of these off, then well, it's going to recompute. It's going to take forever to recompute. But once it's done recomputing, then it'll have uh, just one side. So you can see it works fine over here, but over here it's it doesn't have any any lines. It's all projected from there. Now that might be fine, except there's no yeah there's no lines there. Uh, so now it gets to oh. It just came right back. Oh, that was that was nice. I already computed that, I guess. So, um, yeah. So that's that. So they get multiplied together, and then and that's the the color for the side bricks. So then, let's see. We got into oh no. So th then there's a bunch of um, I put a, a Musgrave texture in, and I'm blending it using the factor so that it doesn't go on the grout, and I do some. Uh, some color ramp stuff to try to make it look like actual concrete just to give a little bit of variation in there uh, it doesn't really work so well but that's fine and then i i thought that there was some i don't know what happened to it i thought there was some little pieces of like little divots in here where did those go i don't know where those went i'm gonna have to fix that at some point anyway uh, so then I've got, oh, here's another geometry. This is just the normal um, for the, I think that's a global normal. And it goes into a normal, and I get the dot product, and then I do a color ramp. And this is, all this does is it selects the, what counts as the top of the surface. So if we go back and add our handy UV sphere, link it to the material, uh, all this does is adjust how far down that goes. Oh, I should smooth there. Uh, all it does is adjust how far down this goes. So you can make it just on the top. You can make it so far up that even the little slope on this ramp is enough to turn into concrete. Or you can you know, make it go all the way down so that uh, the whole top is, is covered. So that's all that does. Here we're gonna undo that and make that go away. All right. Uh, so that's the the slope selection, and then this gets used all over the place uh, to all those all these nodes because some of them I want to just apply to the top, and some of them I want to apply just to the side. Uh, so how far have we gotten? We've gotten the grout. We've gotten the multiply. Okay. So here's a, a trick. I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but this is a trick that I've been using. I, I have an emission uh, node in here, and then I can pull the colors into this emission node and it recalcs really fast and I can see what I'm working with. So like this node here is right now is hooked into the color of the emission node. So I can tell, okay, what is this multiply actually doing? Well, this multiply is uh, basically just the sides. It's the color values for the sides of this thing. And so then I can say the next step, well, this goes into a multiply with this over here. This is going to be the water line. So I'm going to guess that this is going to have water lines on it as well. So if I could drag this in here, then it's going to have the water lines. And there it is. So it's a, an easy way to debug your, your complicated textures when you're trying to figure out what's going on in there. Uh, works really well. So And then you just, when you're done with it, you just take this original and drag it back into the material output. So I'm going to use this to kind of show off what's going on in this texture. So uh, that's the top white color that gets mixed in with the blue tiles. And this is just the base, the base color. Uh, then I do a little bit of um, a little bit more noise in the grout, I think. Uh, yeah, I've got some speckles in there. Let's see, is that still working? Oop. One of the problems is you have to stay zoomed out far enough that you can actually connect these. 
uh, there. Yeah, see, that's not working at all. So there's something, something broken here. This factor, add this Musgrave vector from empty O1. Oh, this isn't connected to anything. Why isn't it connected to anything? It should be connected to something. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. okay. Hmm. That's odd. All right, well, I don't know what that used to be connected to, but it used to be connected to something. Uh, speckles. Should be color, should be factor. Now, oh, what's this then? Here you go, get live debugging, live texture debugging. All right, so that works. That's just a bunch of little speckles. Add, I'm adding a little bit. Oh, maybe I was, maybe I was adding this. Vernoy, oh yeah, I was adding this. Yeah, there we go. Now, now the speckle should be working. Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's going to be so much better now. I just fixed it. I don't know how I broke it. That's a little scary. And then it adds it in. Okay, so there, there's those little dark speckles on there. Okay, and then those are going to get added in. All right, so that, that's the dark speckles, and then it gets mixed in. With the color, I think we're almost done here with the uh, the lines, I think. What is this? This is more, more Musgrave. Okay. Subtract factor. Okay, and this adds, okay, this adds the, the speckles to the grout, I think. Yeah, yeah. So this is the, the grout, and I think this is the final color. Yeah. This goes into the base color. So this is the final color um, for that whole texture. So that's how we get all those. So it's just basically adding adding in layers on layers on layers. Oh, it looks so much better with those little, little dimples on it. That's cool. I, I, man, I missed it. Okay, so uh, then, so that's the, let's bring this up. So that's the base color. But then there's all these other things. There's metallic and specular which is a color ramp. Actually, I don't think I need both metallic and specular anymore. Um, let's see. We'll put this back in texture so we get our real texture. And then it's going to take forever to render. Okay, so there's metallic and specular. What happens if I just take off metallic or just take off specular does that work better does that work worse who knows let's find out that seems to work still what if it's just in specular i have to do a side by side or something it takes too long for it to refresh i can't tell yeah so that's brighter I think the metallic has more color. I don't know. I like to having it both. Uh, then there's roughness. The roughness is pretty straightforward. It's just got um, it's just got some. Let's see. That goes in there. This goes in here. It's just got some uh, medium roughness on the sides. High roughness on the lines on the sides. Ooh, but that's not. Doesn't look like it's getting both. Doesn't look like it's getting the vertical lines. What happened to our vertical lines? Invert. Top white. All right. So it, it makes sure that it doesn't go on the top. Uh, grout gray. Is that working? Hmm. Did I break something somewhere? I break it again. Throughout light, multiply those two together. Hmm. 
Hmm. Um, should be the grout, right? Yeah, that's working. How about this? Is this working? Oh, interesting. This multiplies the colors. This just multiplies the factors. And the factors don't work. Oh, because they get, yeah, because they get, all right. So this should be clamped and it should be addition. It shouldn't be multiply. There we go. I just fixed something else. Good. Um, where were we though? Oh no, lost in my own texture space. Okay, so that uh, gets added together and it gets into the grout. Okay, so this is grout light. Yeah, now that's working. Okay. And then that gets mixed in here. Color ramp. All right, and then this should be our roughness. There we go. Now it's got the vertical lines in it. Didn't really need the vertical lines, but now it has them. And, and that's great. Good. Okay. Fixed another thing. And that was that was feeding into a lot of stuff. So that should, that should help some other stuff too. Uh, okay. So that does the color ramp and uh, does the roughness. What are we doing? Roughness. Uh, then there's the normal. And the normal is this whole other chain of, of stuff. I don't know why this is way over here. Oh, because it's getting, yeah, it's getting stuff fed in from all over the place. Uh, so the normal is tricky and the the real magic happens right here in this color ramp. So let's take a look at this. So, uh, or, well, before we get there, all right. So uh, brick texture, uh, this is just the, the multiply of those bricks. Let's get that. Oop, almost got there. Uh, this is just the the bricks on top and it's got lights and darks and I'm multiplying it by the top white so that I just get those I don't get streaks down the sides then that feeds into this color ramp and this color ramp converts that into a a partwise normal map uh, and it does that by basically taking the the black and filtering that out into straight up which is rgb 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and blue one and then the other ones in, in that range of grays it just basically portions them out evenly among a little bit toward red a little bit toward green a little bit away from red and a little bit away from green and what that does is it it basically randomizes the gray values into uh, diversions from vertical so that the tiles instead of pointing all straight up they point a little bit off at angles and then this color goes into the normal map and the normal map converts it to a vector and the vector uh, gets added together with this other vector from this other bump map this other bump map is basically the whole yeah well let's pull that in that in so this is a bump map for all the all the, the stuff and it's it's way too bright so let's add a little math in here divide by there there we go uh, so this has a bunch of bumpiness in the grout. It's got some divots where those little white spots are, where the dark spots are for the kind of the concrete. Uh, when it pushes up against the, the edge of the form, it leaves these little holes where air pockets or, or pieces of the aggregate get trapped. So that's what those are. And then I should probably add some light speckles to it as well on a different seed, but I haven't done that. Uh, and then it's got some light waviness 
on the surface here that comes from, I think it's this Musgrave texture, where it got divided by a thousand, so it's not even noticeable on the RGB, uh, but you can see it as some, some slight waviness in the tiles when it gets converted to a normal map. So that all goes into the bump map, and then uh, that gets converted to a normal map as well. And then those two normals get added together. I don't know if it's legal to do that, but that's what I do. And that goes into the normal. And so all together, that gets us, delete that, that gets us our lovely texture. And should be even more lovely now because it's got those little speckles on it. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah, there's my speckles. I knew they were missing. I missed you so much, speckles. All right. So that is uh, that is how I did that. And now, um, what else? Oh, uh, one more thing I want to show off. Shift tilde does a like a first person mode. And that is pretty fun for walking around and exploring in here. Because it's almost as good as being in a game engine. It's a little bit laggy. Uh, I think maybe those those little divots with the bump map have thrown stuff off, but whoop. There we go. And then V jumps. And so you can walk around in here and uh, pretend that you're playing in a game or something, or, or at least see how it kind of how it would look inside a game and uh, yeah let's go on a walk up that procedural walkway here we go yes oh so cool and we're still inside and then that is the uh, the rendered the rendered image from cycles and so you can see how it's got the light coming down on the edges here and it's all it's all nice looking Whoa, almost fell off the edge. But this isn't too bad. It doesn't have such pretty lighting. I could bake the lighting in and make this whole thing one giant texture, but that's, I don't know, it's a lot of work. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's procedural textures and stuff in Blender's Eevee, and uh, yeah, very fun way to explore geometry and, and make cool images and very easy way to texture stuff once it's all set up. I mean, you know, the setting it up is hard, but uh, I'll put this I'll put this up somewhere so that you can you can get to it. Let's see if I can solve my jumping puzzle here. Whoa. Nope. Couldn't do it. Oh well. All right. Thanks guys.